Vice President Kamala Harris's D.C. home. Officials in Texas say as many as 20,000 migrants are waiting at the border, hoping to gain entry into the U.S. The Supreme Court is expected to make a ruling tomorrow. Until then, Title 42 will remain in place. In a ATL, while Rob Durienzo is working on getting answers, as many neighbors are still without water. Yeah, but first, we will check in with Chief Meteorologist David Candley, tracking this wintry mix, David, hitting North Georgia tonight. Indeed, there, uh, Christine and Tom, we're looking at some snow showers across the area, and some seeing some light accumulation, a little dusting, and causing some problems on area roadways. Here's the scenario right now, and it's basically kind of north of I-20 is what we're looking at. You see some areas down below freezing. Out here to the west. Concern is temperatures are at freezing right now. The precipitation beginning to let up a little bit, but we've had some slick spots in Floyd County and then Polk County out to the west of Metro Atlanta and up into Murray County there in the North Georgia Mountains. Right now a little burst of snow taking place out here just to the east of Metro Atlanta. Uh, not so much up here to the northeast, although we've had so few flakes flying up towards Fannin County. Notice down here now east of the city, we got temperatures there in the mid-30s and a pretty good snow burst in at around 285 and 20 in DeKalb County right now. But that is falling into a layer that is very, very dry and it's evaporating as it hits the ground and so forth. Plus, that's all that's left from last night right there. <laughs> now, why are these things here? Huh? Why are they here? Car with signs arriving at a supermarket. Nevertheless, there are people calmly walking out of the store with filled trash bags and other items which they're believed to have stolen from the store. Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown on Monday condemned the people stealing from stores during a deadly storm which killed dozens. It's just absolutely reprehensible. Uh, I don't know how these people can even live with themselves, how they can look at themselves in the mirror. They are the lowest of, of the low. The mayor says it appears the people didn't actually need the items they stole. They're not looting foods and medicines. They're just loot, looting items that they want. So these aren't even people in distress. These are people that are taking advantage of a natural disaster and the suffering of many in our community. The city's police under 17 and 2 says it is better for a person to have a millstone tied around their neck and to be thrown into the sea than for anyone to harm or damage a child. The reality is this. God is going to judge every last one of you for decisions that are made on behalf of children. You know, this past year we spent $1 million on a diversity office. And how did that benefit black children? How did it benefit children in general? Well, 78% of third through eighth grade black students are not proficient in math in Wake County. We're wasting taxpayer dollars putting money towards this diversity office that's not benefiting those who need it the most. 66% of third through eighth grade students are not proficient in reading. Black students, they're not reading on grade level. They're not performing mathematically and they're not going to be able to get jobs in the fields like STEM. But we're wasting money on a diversity, equity, and inclusion office while we are failing black students in the name of diversity. There it is, Katie. D-E-I, or as you sometimes say, die. Uh, I feel like Amen, I'm sitting. Brother. God bless him. I, I feel like I'm sitting on a church pew right now. Yeah. That's a Sunday sermon. And I like how he started because that's how he, he started his entire speech was putting it back on to when your day comes. Face the Lord and uh, are you, what's that millstone? Yeah. What's, what's tied around your neck there? for you, mm -hmm. said, he said, if a millstone gonna... were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea, then you would cause one of these little ones to sin or to stumble. I actually quoted that same verse. If you watch my Christ in Culture this week, here's a little shameless plug. 
I'm talking about the mainstreaming of drag and queering America with this demonic drag queen story hour. But we're talking here about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We, I don't know how many times we've used those words, Katie. I am tired of it. In fact, we in the last, was it yesterday or just earlier, we're talking about this church, the denomination of Pennsylvania, not Pennsylvania, Presbyterian Church, um, worried about inclusion. So they're changing some of their, they're worried about their stats, right? Who's actually coming to their churches? You know what? Once we start worried about words like inclusion and we redefine that word, you're going to go all the way in a different direction than what you actually should be doing. And in this case, educating all students. And you can tell by the show we did last week where test scores are abysmal, aren't they? Abysmal. That's right. So, and and he's a a father and a pastor, so obviously he's well-spoken. Yep. The fact that he is able to very calmly read you the statistics of how bad our students are doing, but hey, he had more to say about how they're grooming our children as well. Mm Mm-hmm. And as we talk about inclusion and making sure that the trans student feels comfortable and the queer student feels comfortable, what does that have to do with reading, writing, and arithmetic? As we are, in, oh, as we, as we are teaching cultural Marxism and grooming children to be the next pervert, we are damaging our kids in this public school system, and it needs to stop. Perfect timing, by the way. Um, so is he being provocative by saying we are grooming <gasps> some of these young children to be the next pervert? I mean, you know what's happening in our culture. You know what Hollywood is promoting. You know what the corporations are promoting, what the Democrat Party is, you know, promoting. So, Katie, is he is that word pervert? Is that too strong a word here? Oh, yeah, you're not a- allowed to say many a words depending on what the, as he said, the woke county he went from wake wake county County to woke Woke county County. so who knows what you're allowed to say (laughs) anymore well i'm receiving um a letter of support or referral to surgeon um as young as age 14 is probably sometime between 14 and 15 is the youngest but again like i said the majority are happening closer um to 18 uh between more between 16 to 18. Um, and again, I think it's really important to remember that age is a number, um, but as an adolescent medicine and developmental specialist, we know that um, where a child is cognitively and socially is more important than that um, exact number of their age. Mm, Did she yeah. say more important? No, important. And nowadays, because I'm getting older as well, the so-called experts, let's put them in air quotes, experts, um, aren't that expert anymore. So when we have someone like her, who's probably about my age, honestly, saying that, well, you know, you got to remember that age is just a number. It makes me think of what kind of education you were given to, to get that belief in you that, well, I mean, whatever she said, she was a developmental something expert in this and that. Cause, cause age is just a number to her. This what? is, this just shows me how deplete our overall education has been even for for who she well, is. Well, even aside from education, what's the underlying reason or purpose that they're asking this question now? What does age really matter? I mean, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. Well, I mean, you're just going down another couple of years. What does age matter? Um, I could say so much right now, but NAMBLA, I don't know if any of you guys remember that organization. The uh, National um, uh, and National American Man Boy Love Association (NAMBLA), and this is what they're trying to—they're trying to erase any barriers or restrictions when it comes to sexual contact or activity or relationship with people of different ages, adults and children. So we're treat—they want to treat children in a way as they would adults. So when you talk about these, what they are calling top surgeries, right? Why should that really matter? 14. I mean, yeah, thank you for putting this up there. The number of chest surgeries for transgender children, children jumped fivefold in three years. Just look at that graph. Katie, look at that graph. Will you look at that? Well, look at that line. <laughs> I mean, that's not really a, a kind of incremental thing. That just shoots up. It's almost and, exponential. And it's going to continue. It will continue because of the promotion of this as normal. They're normalizing this. And again, they're trying to erase age barriers 
gender barriers and yeah. Well, what David, this is because as adults, we need to treat our children as they're adults when it comes to talking about adult things. But when our children become adults, then we have to treat them back like children because they've decided to take out, you know, massive loans or, or they just can't do anything of like responsibility. But we must give them responsibility about, you know, whether or not they're going to have kids someday because apparently 14 year olds, they know all about that. Some of the questions about fertility, these are important ones um, that we discuss with um, patients and families early on and often. Um, so we, we have, certainly have discussions prior to starting puberty blockers and prior to starting uh, gender affirming hormones, testosterone or estrogen. You know, transgender um, youth in their families, just like everyone else, may, um, you know, are aware of the fact that there are other ways to build families beyond um, having a child biologically, right, that um, folks can, can adopt as well. And many transgender um, children and adolescents are interested in having biological um, children, and many are not um, interested in having children at all or are interested in, um, in adopting. And then I go! Oh my god, what the hell? Okay, so it says you push the plunger up and out comes the baby. I'm kidding. That just hangs out inside you? Well, how does it, where, how do you get it out? Is that what this thing's for? How dare you appropriate being a woman? If we can't just wear, you know, sombreros or hit pinatas on Cinco de Mayo, because I am not of Mexican origin, then you cannot try and stick a tampon up any part of your regions because you are not a woman. And the simple fact that he is doing the day 12 of being a woman tells me that he's following that Dylan Mulvaney actor who is also trying to appropriate being a woman. How dare you? But... Speaking of crazy people who are desperately seeking attention, our old biologically male yet non-binary identifying friend Jeffrey Marsh is at it again. This time he, and I emphasize he so nobody gets confused, is once again preaching from the science pulpit, telling young people that biological sex is fake. Off we go. Biological sex is fake. Yes, we all know that gender roles are fake, but do not say to a trans person, biologically male, born female, male-bodied, no, 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 no. There is no biological criteria for gender that is both universal and a binary in human beings. But science... All right, let's get away from these wackadoodles and move on to some far more sane people. We head into the classroom. <laughs> gotcha. They are no better. In fact, here's an English teacher with a terrible case of RBF who claims as an English teacher that grammar and writing rules are just dripping in white supremacy. And that's why it's her job to change the rules in the name of justice. As an educator, I am constantly worried if I am part of the problem. What do I mean by that? Well, public education is an institution that upholds lots of problematic systems in our society, like white supremacy and misogyny and colonization, etc. In my role as an educator, I try to undermine that BS in my classroom as much as I possibly can. I teach high school English and whoo, the white supremacy runs deep. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at how we write essays. Start with an introduction that includes a thesis. Always cite your sources. Use transition words like however and therefore these are all made up rules they're arbitrary they were created by westerners in power in linguistic justice april baker bell calls this the language of respectability or the language of power which got me thinking what if i started my school year with a unit on He's saying who and all the other 2,000 convicted pedophiles in california these individuals are allegedly living together in groups of three or more at 442 locations across the state some of these, quote, pedophile dens are reportedly in close proximity to schools. Former Deputy District Attorney Sam Dordulian told the Daily Mail that the numbers are terrifying. He says, quote, even if they're trying to stay clean, they're in an environment where they are around other pedophiles. They're going to be talking about children, having child porn available, and it's just creating a situation where you're almost sure there is going to be another offense. The Daily Mail analyzed the data from the Megan's Law database of registered sex offenders in California 
and found 58,685 sex offenders. 73% or 43,007 of those offenders have been convicted of sex crimes involving children. A spokeswoman for the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation told the Daily Mail that the law states all registered sex offender parolees shall not reside in a single family dwelling with any other sex offender, whether or not they are on parole, unless they're related by blood, marriage, or adoption. However, the Daily Mail interviewed the multiple homeowners at homes where up to six pedophiles were allegedly residing and sharing a room together. The California Department of Justice, which administers the Megan's Law database, had previously told the Daily Mail that they know about these so-called pedophile dens. In a statement last month, the department said that it was the district attorney's courts and state legislators' issue to deal with. But he added that the department has, quote, human trafficking and sexual predator apprehension teams, which work regularly with the local authorities to protect the public safety. We've been identified. And who's the law enforcement officer that identified that child who can prove in court that it is, in fact, a real child victim? In 2016, NCMEC was part of a global effort to find a girl in a video discovered by a New Zealand customs agent. The footage showed U.S. Border Patrol employee Paul Adams raping his then 10-year-old daughter. We could see both their faces for a start. So there was some really good imagery of both of their faces. And they were talking throughout it as well. Six years before the video surfaced in Auckland, Adams confessed to his Mormon bishop that he abused his daughter. A prominent church lawyer told the bishop to keep the abuse secret. As a result, the child was brutalized for seven more years. Today, the video and others still circulate on the internet. They're living with that for the rest of their lives. It's on the internet. It's not going anywhere. And they have to wake up every morning, you know, knowing that there's imagery of those terrible times in their lives still out there that, that people are accessing for their own gratification and they don't care anything about them. Computer analysts at NCMEC determined that the nine-minute video was made in 2015. They also isolated several images of Adam's face and sent them to Homeland Security investigations. Everything HSI does has to have a nexus to the border. So how are we working domestic child exploitation cases? Well, because of the internet, every image. If I send a picture to you right now, it's going to cross the border. Approximately six weeks after the video was discovered in New Zealand, Homeland Security agents arrested Adams. Adams died by suicide in custody while awaiting his trial. Data from NCMEC shows that the original video was viewed about 100 times in 2017. That figure soared to more than 4,500 in 2021. Since 2016, U.S. law enforcement agencies have seized copies of it hundreds of times. Nearly 800 people were arrested in 2021 with the video in their possession. Andrew Thomas, NTD News.